Good morning. Good morning. Now I pray that please in the Lord. Let's watch it together. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen in me. Hallelujah. Almighty God, you all have a voice. All in life. And from you, no secret has been. Hearing the thoughts of our heart by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Oh God. reading from the first letter of John. We know love by this, that he has laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need, and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth, and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and receive from him 
whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of the, the Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey us, his commandments, abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us, the word of the Lord. Lord, it is you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd, and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming, leaves the sheep, and runs away. And the wolf snatches him and scatters him. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I love the sheep that do not belong to this world. I must bear them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I receive this command from my Father. Ask the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please pray. Open our ears, O Lord, to hear your word. Please pray. Open our ears, O Lord, to hear your word. And our lips to speak it true. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Luke, who wrote the Acts of the Apostles, tells us how, after Jesus' resurrection, the Holy Spirit formed the Christian church. The events of our first lesson today occurred very soon, within weeks after the first Christian Pentecost. At that first Pentecost, you will recall, the Holy Spirit visibly hovered over the heads of everyone present. Peter preached Christ Jesus, and 3,000 people became Christ followers. And somehow in that time, as today's lesson from Acts will show, Peter became fearless. Our first lesson last week from Acts was about Peter and John going to the temple to worship. The service was at three in the afternoon, the service only the most devout Jews attended, prime circumstances for a beggar to receive financial assistance from the faithful. And sure enough, a man who had been lame from birth had asked Peter and James for money. And sure enough, a man who had been lame from birth had asked Peter and John for money. Instead, he received physical healing in the name of Christ Jesus. When the people gathered in all of this miracle, Peter preached a variant of his Pentecost sermon, and another 5,000 men believed that Jesus was the Christ and repented of their unbelief. Let's do a little math. Peter had preached two sermons, and 8,000 men, not people, men, came to believe that Jesus is the Messiah. What percentage of Jerusalem's population at that time was 8,000 men? The answer is we don't know. The 
the best guess of archaeologists is that there were 60 to 70,000 people living in Jerusalem then. And presumably, this would be about 24,000 men as a rough estimate. If 8,000 of them began to believe that Jesus was the Messiah very soon after his resurrection, that's a third of all men in the city. Four more sermons from Peter with his track record of results would have left the temple empty, would have left the temple coffers empty. Is it any wonder at all that the high priest himself and all the members of his family employed by the temple were concerned? Scripture tells us that Caiaphas and his circle of enforcers and advisors had been responsible for engineering Jesus' crucifixion. This extreme move, they must have thought, sure they had been all believed in Jesus as the Messiah. And now, suddenly, a huge number of people believed in Christ Jesus. This Jesus was still usurping Caiaphas' authority, still posing a problem to his power. So maybe we can understand, at least intellectually, why Caiaphas had Peter and John arrested for healing the lame man outside the temple in the name of Jesus the Christ. Peter should have been afraid, very afraid, and yet Peter seemed fearless. First thing to notice about the trial itself is Peter's confidence. Just weeks ago, in a courtyard over, the, over an open charcoal fire, Peter had denied to a lowly servant girl that even knew Jesus. And now, just a few weeks later, Peter stood before Caiaphas and his family members in the temple police and boldly confronted them about Jesus' death and resurrection. I love this story. Peter stood there, stood up unafraid to a power complicit in the wrongful death, and told the absolute truth. I didn't heal this lame man, Peter said. The person you crucified healed this man. The person you crucified rose from the dead and freed me from fear and makes me unafraid of you. Unafraid even of death. Our scripture lesson explains Peter's new confidence this way. It says Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. Apparently, when filled with the Holy Spirit, there is no room for fear. The Holy Spirit fills us with truth, fills us with confidence, not in our own strength in the strength of the living Christ, our belief erases our fear. All too often, in our own time, we Christ followers forget about or even deny the existence of the Holy Spirit. We give credit to other factors for the joys of life. For example, I heard this week a doozy of a denial. This person, not anyone from our Church of the Resurrection, credited the coronavirus, of all things, for passing them by. Never mind that the virus is a mindless, a voracious scourge that would eat whoever and whatever it encounters. In this way, the coronavirus is a life form that epitomizes our age well by sharing the greed that has consumed our culture consumed our values, and consumed our public decency, the virus will always and only point to itself, point to me, feed me, and will always and only declare, you must die so that I can live. Be careful who you thank for all that you have, who you thank for all that you are, Thank Christ Jesus for his enduring message. I must die so that you can live. Feed on me and share what you are given. 
Today's lesson is clear. Invite the Holy Spirit to fill us with truth, casting out whatever fears we might harbor, casting out fears of failure and fears of success, fears of rejection and fears of oppression, fears of policing and fears of lawlessness, fears of power and fears of loss of power, Fears of death and the fears of life. Release your fears and let the Holy Spirit fill you with love and purpose and move you into action in the name of the risen Christ. This is what Peter did when confronted by Caiaphas and his power. Kill me if you will, Peter seems to say, and I'll be resurrected like Christ Jesus. A while I'm still here, let me tell you about the one who has healed me of my fear. Rejoice with me that Christ has healed the slain man. We at Resurrection have much to be thankful for. We have each other as well as our families, and we will stand together against all the fears of this life. We have faith that in both death and life there is life abundant. We have this beautiful new building to share with our West End neighbors. We are filled with the Holy Spirit, empowered to stand with truth and to proclaim Christ Jesus. What more do we need? Indeed, what more do we need? I ask in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, many of us have of us and We believe in one God, the only Son of God, the eternal and divine God, life and light. To God, to God, divide and love me, or one day, God, who will be all things in the for us and our salvation, even down from that, by the power of the Holy Spirit, in the eternal power of the church of the earth, and was made known for our sake, is our death, is our death. On the third day, we are always suspicious. We are sending a man and speak at the top He will come with the Lord as a friend. Then we speak of the Lord. We believe in the Lord, the Lord of the Lord, who proceeds from the Father's Son. In the Father and the Son, he has spoken to the world. We believe in our own salvation. He has done his own. We know that the resurrection and the life of the world. Christ is given and the call in the light of this world with a new life. We therefore bring our concern and thank him to Christ. That the church may boldly and faithfully proclaim the resurrection of Christ to those who do not yet believe in it. We pray to the Lord. Risen to Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of the church may embody the mystery and the life which we celebrate in our liturgy. We pray to the Lord. Risen to Lord, hear our prayer. Our compassion of those who suffer from any grief or trouble, we pray the Lord. We pray the Lord and we are prepared. That the leaders of our nation, who are the chief priorities, those who pray to me, 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 
From the final elements, he brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. He made us the rulers of creation, but he turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the freedom and peace. I am the Lord of the Dragon's Save us from 
the time of trial, to deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God, I promise you have prepared a day for us. Now we are those who are called to the suffer of the Lord. Let us pray together. Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. In thanksgiving, let us pray. Father of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one among all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit. That we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the virgin life of Christ and our Savior. Amen. God of peace, you have brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of your everlasting covenant. May he be perfect in every good work to do his work. Working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, please, love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.